The reason I chose this music is because Lule, like Portugal, has had a very Moorish past, and Lule, like Silves, was one of the more important towns in the Algarve. We'll get to that in a bit. However, today it's still an important business hub in the Algarve, being home to 17,900 people. The municipality of Lule is one of the largest in the country and one of the wealthiest, due to Valdelobo and Quintalago. It acts as a dormitory town for people who work in Faro, Valdelobo, Quintalago and Villamora. And as it's 20 minutes away from the coast, it is less seasonal than those holiday towns on the beach. Let's just quickly look at the access. Lule is well served by the A22 highway in yellow, with a western and eastern slip road offering easy access. The rail line passes by, but the Lule train station is about 15 minutes drive from the town centre, which is odd, but understandable when you look at the geography of the Algarve. Going back to the road network, you can see that Lule has a semi-complete ring road surrounding it. This section is currently under construction, and I personally can't wait for it to be open. It'll save me, and many others, many minutes when driving from Sao Braz del Portel westwards. If you look at the size of the urban areas in the Algarve, Portimao eclipses Faro by a couple of thousand people. Olhau is third largest and Lule is seventh largest in the Algarve. Now it makes sense to connect these three centers, Lule, Faro and Olhau, up even more and a better transport network has been suggested. I'm not sure at what stage the planning is at, maybe some of you can recall. So if you do know, please drop it in the comments and um, yeah, we can chat about it. I'd love to see because there are some links on the Portugal news, I remember. In case you're wondering who I am, my name is Nick Robinson. I've been living in the Algarve for over 22 years now, and I love the Algarve so much, and I really enjoy making videos about this place. And recently I've been making quite a few videos about castles up in the, you know, on the border and stuff, and I've been making videos about paddle surfing in Ediceta. And I'm, for a while I'm gonna come back and make some really dedicated videos all about the Algarve. I'm gonna get some really great adventures lined up as well. So stay watching for more info about the Algarve. Now let's get back to Lule where I've lived for a couple of years. I lived through there for about four or five years. Love it. Fantastic place. Really, really good spot to move to. The Moors originally made a small fortified city or Almadina here called Al Ulya after the Romans had populated a few villages in the area. Prior to that, there were small farming settlements. Then Phoenicians and Carthaginians had arrived much earlier and founded the first trading posts along the coast where presumably the farmers sold their goods. This bell tower of Lule Sao Clement Church was actually originally a minaret of a former Muslim mosque and it's one of the few remaining Islamic religious architectural elements from the Moorish rule in Portugal. Huh. This park, Jardim dos Amuados, is an old Moorish Muslim cemetery and wow, I didn't, you know, I didn't know this. I thought I've been walking around there all the time. I didn't know there could have been ghosts drifting around there. It's Moorish ghosts as well. Wow. Um, the castle was rebuilt shortly after the town was taken by Dom Paio Perez Correa during the reconquest in 1249. As we know, the city walls date back to the Almoravid period. And in 1280, the town and castle were donated to the Order of the Knights of Santiago by Don Dinij, as is quite customary with a lot of castles. By the 14th century, Lule was in complete economic ruin, as the town had prospered during the Moorish rule as a result of trade with North Africa. Now, King John I tried his best to alleviate the problem by investing in the town and giving Lule special privileges. And eventually, due to Portugal's maritime expansion in the 15th century, the town began to thrive again by producing wine, olive oil, dried fruit, handicrafts, salt and fish. I don't know how they would get their fish, obviously, you know, probably from, from the coastline. But it's highly likely they got their salt from that green rectangular box over there. Actually, that's a salt mine. I'm not sure when it was started, but that's actually currently a salt mine. And underneath Lule, there are... Actually, I think there's about 30 kilometers of tunnels all around and they actually um, bring up salt from that and it still works today. But that's more about in the things to do. So let's get on with the history. Interestingly, the very first hospital in the Algarve was created in 1471. The wounded from the Battle of Tangiers came and recuperated there, which is amazing. So during the earthquake of 1755, the castle suffered severely. That's why you can only see the northwest corner of it at the moment. 
Um, the, and the present remains of the castle consists of those three outward projecting towers and one inward projecting gate tower and the walls that connect them. And all of them were restored in the 20th century. Now, if you look down on the castle in Lole, we have, and we're going to get into this in, in a little bit later, but every year there's the Medfest and it actually takes place in the old town. And these are the borders of the old town, which are the old castle walls. Before I tell you about useful places in Lole, real estate and things to do in Lole, here's how we filmed this day. Hey, good morning. So we're just heading off and with this beautiful thing. Hello, good morning. <laughs> we're taking her to school and because um, she goes to school in Lole these days. So then we're going to do a proper video all about Lole because the last time I did a video was probably in 2021, I think, actually. So it's been a long time coming. So we're going to do Lole in 2023. See you there. All right, so in Lole, it's really, really difficult to park. I mean, you can park all the way down this avenida here, but it's um, uh, there is a parking area. So we're going to head over to that parking area. But I, it's just so difficult. When you get into the old town, it really is tricky to park. So you generally have to park and walk. But just bear that in mind. It's important. <laughs> Thank you, my love. Good. <laughs> <laughs> So Izzy, you're pumped for school? Yes, I am. It's bizarre though. It's almost October and it's going to be 32 degrees today. 32 degrees? Yeah, really hot. Cheers, Anne. <laughs> Right, so I just walked into the castle and I found Robin here. Uh, <laughs> what I a Nick. coincidence. Hi Nick, <laughs> hello, good morning. Good How are you smiling. doing? Yeah, welcome. Welcome everybody to uh, Lule Castle. Robin is the Algarve Alex tour guide and he takes people on regular tours around the eastern or western Algarve. And I must say, you guys really do like him. He always gets rave reviews and it's a pivotal part of the relocation process. You really need to get a feel for the place you're going to move to. And Robin does it extremely well. And it's a really good idea to do this before you go looking for houses and things because it puts everything in place. And it's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extra step, but I think it's a vital step. Anyway, I was lucky he had a day off. So we, we cruised around and then we went for coffee at Postigo, which is actually a bar and it's a biker's bar and it's really, really good fun at night, but they got good coffee as well. So there's another coffee shop that I'll show you a little bit later that has incredible coffee. Ooh. I'm embarrassed to say I've actually never been here, even after living for, for 20 years in the Algarve, I've never been up to this castle. That is really cool. It's a fantastic buttress. It's a fantastic buttress, Robin. It's so high. Yeah. You don't like heights? I don't like heights. It's really high up here. <laughs> it is pretty high up here. Check this out. Wow. It's really nice to be here in the castle because it does form part of the tours. Actually, mainly when we do the tours with Robin, is that we focus on relocation and where to live and things like that. But it's also exciting to focus a little bit on history. So, you know, occasionally Robin takes people up to the castle and to other sort of, you know, historical points around the Algarve. Yeah. You've been here before? Yeah, with uh, other Nick, Nick Real Estate. Oh, yeah. We, got, we had a few beers on the outside.
So I met up with Verity. Hey. Yeah, you might remember Verity from a couple of uh, episodes ago. When was it? We were doing a video about Quatera, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about kids. So Verity has joined me just to show me her perception of Lulay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love Lule. Um For some people it feels like, oh, you went all the way to Lulay, but really it's like a 10 or 15 minute drive. Um, but as soon as you live in the Algarve, some people are still happy to commute long distances. Like when I was in London, I would travel 40 minutes on the tube and it was nothing. Whereas now if I have to get in the car for more than 25 minutes, I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but it's always definitely worth a drive for me. I teach Reformer Pilates at the Reformer Pilates Algarve studio here in Lule. Um Parking's a challenge, but Continenti, the supermarket, you can thankfully park there. I think um, from my own expeditions around that Lole has the best restaurants, it's got the cool little bars, cool little boutiques, it's just got a different vibe to it that feels much more authentic. Have you been to any restaurants that you can mention by name? Definitely. So there's a really nice Japanese place just up on the side here, which is on the main strip, and it's just sushi obviously, it's a Japanese place. No, I think we're going to have lunch there. Oh, are you? Yeah, what's it called? Kazuma? Kazuma? Yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. Um, which is like actually a play on words because it means like blanket in Portuguese, I think. Oh really? I think so. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's, that's a cool place. And Ollie Wonders as well, the rooftop, that's quite popular. There's another one called Cafe Zeke, that's another rooftop type of bar experience, so that's really cool. Um, great for like a sunset cocktail or just even, you know, some nibbles. Um, and if you are up to vegan food, there's like a vegan restaurant called Caju, I believe. So, you know, they're Cajou. kind of casual and obviously lots of Portuguese type of bistro places. So. Yeah, like Bocage and places like that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And Bicavilha. Yeah, we went there last night, Bicavilha. Yeah. yeah. Pretty nice. This is Cafe Calcinha, and as you can see, it was established in 1929. One of the oldest, if not the oldest, cafes in Lule. And the statue sitting down was of Antonio Aleixo who was a famous Portuguese poet from Lule, and he used to sit here and write. The camera to get our residence permit or something. Oh, we went right. straight there, got a coffee, got some banana bread, and then left, and then realized that we left our document that we got from the camera ah. in the cafe. <laughs> But to me, it's like probably the best coffee in the whole of Lola. It's amazing. And I think in Algarve. I oh think it's probably the best coffee in Algarve. Yeah. Do you actually ever buy stuff at the market? I have. Yeah. I don't come to this one that's a bit touristy though. Um, but when we first moved here, we did it all the time. Especially Saturday morning, it's crazy. Yeah, well, yeah that's why we don't go anymore for the parking. Nice. Kept seeing it. We're here in Bean 17, which is probably some of the best coffee in the whole of Algarve. I just love it. So and don't miss this place. It's just off the market. It's quite difficult to find, but it's a really great little spot. I will eat it, and then someone else will eat it and have different taste buds. So. Here comes the coffee. Hi hi. 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 Hi, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good. Uh, actually, I haven't... How long have you been open for? Because it's been quite a long time, huh? Yes, I think it's almost um, seven years now, I think. Seven yeah, years? Six and a half, seven years that we started here before Corona. And do you still roast your own beans? Yeah, we do. In that time we didn't, but now we do. We have our own roastery down near the Castello, own place. Um, so we have a Peru El Palto, that's the one that you have there with the flat white. And we have a nice Ethiopia. Um, yeah, and it's really, really uh, enjoyable and people like it. So, um, yeah, fresh made as a barista with fresh milk. Best place in Algarve for coffee, don't you agree? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. There are two secrets why Lona's coffee is so good. She knows how to make it and she roasts her own beans. And we're going to go and check out that whole process. See, Verity's got her own, own Instagram channel, huh? Instagram. Yeah, just some Instagram videos. It just started off with me just taking some little videos while I was out with my family. Um, and yeah, a few of them got quite popular. So now I'm just putting a little bit more effort in. Trying to Good be consistent, idea. yeah. What's the name of the channel? It's called My Algarve Life. Cool. Good coffee. Mm. This is really good coffee, actually. <laughs> I know that guy. Hey, look who I Hello. found. I'm 
back. <laughs> <laughs> it's lunchtime, so I'm taking Izzy for a quick lunch. At this, and she wanted to go to this fancy sushi place. Ooh, I'm about to get hit in the head here. <laughs> fancy sushi place. So it's called. Is this it here? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go in. Go on then. Funny that we were just talking about it earlier with Verity. Camisa. So, have you been here before? No. Never. Neither have I. But this looks really good. Looking good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah as well. You can show it. It's like nature. Ah, beautiful. Really on top, yeah. So how long have you been here? I've been here. I've been here for two years. Okay, cool. Beautiful place. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. It's very nice. It's like a, a trip to Japan. A trip to Japan. Yes. Exactly, yeah. Really nice decor in here, all this bamboo and these parasols everywhere. And tons of space behind as well, and it's also a nice little... Some more tables out here as well, which is cool. Check. Thank you. You're welcome. So Izzy, what do you like about Lola? Um, I like Hofei a lot. Uh, I do think that it's a bit too quiet for me still. Um, but twice a year we have, not twice a year, but like a couple times a year we have some really cool things going on. Like the Med Festival, which is like three nights in the middle of summer and it's just music everywhere and food everywhere and it's amazing. And the White Nights and there's amongst other things I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And I find it to be a beautiful place. I just, I would argue that it's a bit too quiet. Where would you prefer? Lisbon. No. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are? Who knows? That oh, one's for me. I better grab one as well. Oh, it's stuck in a leaf. Look at that. That is wow. great. Thank you very much. What did it Thank that you. Is, is that for all for us? <laughs> yes, wow. it is. Because <laughs> imagine if you let it fall in the sauce and it splash everywhere. <laughs> Please smile for the camera. <laughs> ah, look at this, huh? Look at Beauty. So before we go and check out our next mission with our next guest, why don't we just check in with Nick Smith on the real estate? Because he is the Algarve Addicts real estate agency, and I'm the Algarve Addicts video guy, and Robin is the Algarve Addicts tour guide. So we're getting quite a team here. So here's Nick to tell you a little bit about real estate in the Algarve. And we just sold one of these apartments to a fantastic couple. So it's working really well. Hi guys, it's the other um, Nick here at um, Carbatics. Um, the real estate one, I suppose you can call me. Um, so yeah, just in the context of the Lule video we're doing, um, I thought it might be helpful just to add a few bits on the real estate front. Um, talk about some areas, talk about some prices. But um, but overall, look, you know, um, Lule is the richest, sorry, um, Concilio in the um, in the Algarve. It's um, it has the most number of chimneys, and by chimneys I mean folos in Portuguese, which is single dwellings. So there's about sixty seven thousand um, in there. So by far and away the biggest in the, in in the Algarve, which is um, either a positive or a negative, depending on what you're wanting to achieve if you move here. Um, you either want people or you don't. Um, the it's also a Concilio of um, Contrasting of contrast, really, in the southern sort of co coastal side of the of the actual um, Concilio itself, you get the highest price. These are the resort-based um, areas, the Vadalobos, the Quinta Lagos. Nick's done a video on um, the Quinta Lago and Vadalobo area. That is the highest price price point you're going to find. And then as you basically travel north, this is probably the simplest way to say it. It's getting cheaper as you go through the different areas up to the top of Lule and then beyond Lule into the hills around Alton and Celia. Um, on average, um, in the Concelio, you're looking at about 3,600 euros per, per meter square outside the resorts and about 6,100 inside the resorts. So definitely, if you're looking for value for money, you probably want to stay away from the resorts um, unless you want that curb appeal and to be in that sort of um, affluent um, side, of the, side of the areas. Um, as you go up, you know, you've got some distinct bands, you know, the areas north of Amundsil, 
you're looking at um, Ariero, you're looking at um, Vale de Formosa, and then slowly to the east, Santa Catarina de Cuartos. Sorry for my pronunciation here. And then Gosinia. Um, these are sort of areas just the south of, uh, south of Lule, um, of which all, all sort of provide that sort of villa style, slightly outside of town um, style living. And again, the, the, the prices will vary as they do everywhere, um, not only just because of the location, but also because of um, the finish, um, the, the demand, obviously. You've got the views that they may have in the Lule area. You've got some amazing places that I have almost sort of uh, panoramic views of this of the sea and for the and the southern side of um, uh, of the Algarve. So when you're really looking, you know, looking at it, you've got to weigh out what you want and where you want to be. But you can find kind of anything really, you know, in that in that range. I mean, the range, I suppose, giving you some context behind the disparity. You're looking at between sort of two thousand all the way up to ten thousand uh, ten thousand um, euros a square meter, um, and that's not the results. The results can you know get up seventeen, eighteen, nineteen thousand um, euros a square meter. But we're not going to focus on that. So when you're looking at what you want to do and where you want to be. One is proximity to town. Um, if you've got that little capability of being a little bit further away, you don't mind that. It's a slightly quieter area. You're going to get a little bit more value if you go over the hill behind Lule and um, look at the areas of like Alt and Sanir. Um Lovely places, some great real estate around there, um, but just that little bit further away from the higher density area. Um, but equally, the areas, just as I said to you before, around the southern side of Lule to the east on the Salbrush Road, and even going west on the Bollycam Road, you're going to get some great, you know, great property there, great value, um, and of a size that you probably, you know, is probably going to be manageable. Uh, if you want hills, you can there are and, and big views. You 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 be going into the hills just behind Lule is the first instance where you're going to get them, and then it carries on climbing. If you look at the map, you can see the the sort of the hills actually stretching most way across the Algarve. Uh, but from this this concilio, it starts it starts sort of there. And then you get a few little sporadic ones like the area called Goldra, um, which sits to the sort of southeast of, of Lule. Um, and that's where you're going to get some very, very spectacular views, but you're most likely going to be playing, paying for them. So the Concernio gives is a complete, as I said before, contrast in terms of um, what's available. Um, so more than happy to jump in at any point um, to give some examples of, of what's around, um, what, what, you know, what's available and the price ranges for specific types as you know without narrowing down on one specific property type apartment t2 um you know two bathrooms or a villa four beds with a with a pool and some garden you know it can vary wildly so by all means get in touch we'd love to hear from you and if we can help further um i will anyway hope you like the shirt i thought i'd put some color into the uh into the video and um, take care and hope to hear from you soon thank you nick and yes we loved your shirt seriously thanks for the valuable real estate input now, before we head down to the coffee roastery, I'd love to show you some of the useful places in Lole just to help you really orientate yourself. Now, the main Avenida is a lovely place for a stroll and aligns everything as we head down to the main roundabout in Lole, the Praça da Republica. You can see the old town here encircled in red, and there's some beautiful small streets which encapsulates the market with Bean 17 inside, and I'm sure you've seen me strolling around this. The town council and that lovely bar Robin and I had coffee in, Pushtigu, Café Zik, Bicavella, Ons Gourmet and other restaurants are all close by with Bocage just on the northern side of the road. Apartment living. Now there are many residential blocks all over Lole. But hang on, stop for a sec. These mini suburbs, which are not apartments, they're houses, are great little developments close to but not located directly within the busyness of the town. Actually, technically Lose, Lole is a city, but it's a town in my mind because, you know, 18,000 people, 17,000 people. One of the newer and easier zones of town to get around is, is on the eastern edge, conveniently located right next to a large continent store with schools, cafes and peaceful streets. I used to live there and our apartment block was the first one constructed in what used to be an open field. It's now filled with accommodation. So this video is getting pretty long and there are so many interesting places in Lole. So let me just get going with the important things. So let's talk about health first of all. So there is an international hospital right in the center of Lule, and it's a private international hospital. It's great service. And in the north, there's the Centre Saud, which is the government hospital right over there. There are various medical clinics based around Lule. 
Okay, we're looking at schools. A major school is over there, and that's where the school of secondary is. There are lots of other little schools around Lole, and there's um, a couple of international schools down. But look at it, look at my international schools video for more information about that, or check out the international schools database in the Algarve. As far as shopping goes, there's um, all the grocery stores, the large grocery stores. There's Lidl, Pingados, and a continent on the western side. And then if you go across to the eastern side, there's a recent new Aldi, which has just been built, and then the large continent on the east. There are many parks and squares, two major football fields, two large sports centers, a fantastic swimming pool with tons of tennis courts, squash courts, and a few gyms. It is a lot. It's a big place, and it's got most of the things that you'd need, even like a cycling club. Hey, Andrew. How's it going? Nice to see you. Yes, Thanks welcome. Nick. Thank you. So you roasting, start... you roasting all the coffee for Bean 17? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, really Arabic coffee, and we buy our coffee of places where they know the farmers, so the farmers get also exactly five kilos in for the process. Yeah, that's quite true. I start the process. Wow, so it's a very scientific method. It is, a, it is quite often. There I go. Mostly between 12, 12 and a half minutes, and then it's thinned. The bean temperature, the red one is the most important. The temperature should follow closely. I can do it by one or by two. So these beans behind me are from Peru, and then these ones over here are from where they're from? Ethiopia. 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 The smell in here is just amazing. The smell is just fantastic. It just smells like fresh coffee. It's gorgeous. Well, that's it. This video has gone on long enough. And we, you know, missed out a little bit of stuff. But um, there's so much more to discover when you actually physically get here. Because these videos can do a lot, but you really need to translate that into a real life tour. So get on to algarvatics.com and give Robin a call and come and book your tour. So you can set the foundation for looking for accommodation when you're moving to Portugal. And if you just want to come here and visit, that's fine. We'll take you on a tour too. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. Hold on, addicts.com.